GB News Investigates has seen copies of missing files related to Rotherham's sex abuse crisis that have been returned to Rotherham Metropolitan Borough Council. The files relate to the period of investigation for the town's rape gang scandal, which, of course, attracted numerous headlines, and many people wondered why it had taken so long for the truth to actually ever come out there. Now, that was when over 1,500 girls were abused in the town from 1997 to 2014. It is understood that the recently returned files could relate to active National Crime Agency investigations and then being withheld could have affected police work and prosecutions. This was, of course, just one of a number of grooming gang scandals that gripped the nation. To tell us more about this is GB News investigative reporter Charlie Peters, who joins me in the studio right now. So, Charlie, what is the latest on this? So, we had an update earlier last month that in December 2022... Uh, a batch of several hundred files were returned to the Rotherham Council by a, a whistleblower who's been in touch with GB News who used to work in the town as a youth worker. Now, it turns out today, and um, the NCA and uh, the Borough Council have confirmed that these were duplicates of files they already were in possession of, so they won't affect any prosecutions. But survivors told me that they were very concerned, and indeed this youth worker told me they were very concerned, that these files are floating around in public. Now, we can't share any details, of course, of what was on these documents, because they're extremely sensitive. Mm. But they contain information of uh, you know, alleged perpetrators, some perpetrators who have been jailed, names of victims, operational details about tailing people in cars, and also activity in the town. Some stuff also that hasn't been published in many of the government reports. So extremely sensitive information. Now, the story approached even more concerning levels uh, towards the end of last month, when it was exposed to GB News investigates that some further files were in possession of this youth worker and they had contacted Rotherham Council on the 10th of August saying, mm. this is what I've got, I really need to deposit this. This is a process that has to be done legally, very carefully, and they haven't heard back since then. And they have accused the council of failing to act appropriately to recover some extremely sensitive information. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I think it's worth just reminding our viewers and our listeners of exactly what the situation was in Rotherham because it was a bit of a watershed moment for... Britain's grooming gang shame. Mm, that's right. Between 1997 and 2014, the period of investigation for the J report, they found you know, well over 1,400 young children had been abused in the town during that period. That figure was revised up to 1,510 by the National Crime Agency, and they've made dozens of arrests in their Operation Stovewood investigations. Now, it's known that none of the files that were returned in December, as I said, were related to ongoing investigations. They've already been covered... But again, these are files that shouldn't be in public. Um, the council has confirmed, as, as I said, that they, you know, they recovered these files in December and immediately passed them on to the National Crime Agency. So they followed the right policy as, as required by the Operation mm. Stovewood guidelines. Um, but they haven't yet provided a, a statement or a response to these allegations of failing to collect more data as it was recovered in the beginning and, of last and it's month. And it's that bit that I'm especially interested in, that problem about failing to collect more data, allegedly, because it took a heck of a long time for any information about grooming gangs to come out. Mm. There were fears in other parts of the country about this quote-unquote stoking racial tensions, which, as far as I could gather, was mainly based around the inconvenient fact that mm. a lot of the people who were members of these grooming gangs happened to be from the British Pakistani and British Bangladeshi communities, and people thought that that might end up stoking those racial tensions, despite the fact that, unfortunately, it was just the truth. And then it paved the way for investigations in places like Telford, in Rochdale, at Oldham, Manchester as well, uh, and a fair few others uh, around the country. So victims, and I think anyone with their head screwed on, does have a right to be concerned about the potential for any other cover-ups. Indeed, a, a victim I spoke to this morning expressed deep concern because on the files that I reviewed very carefully, details of her abuser were listed there. And these are files that she hadn't seen before, that hadn't been made aware to her. So it's not known at this stage if these are duplicates of files that the council and the NCA have already seen or if they're originals. We don't even know the origin of the file, but they do look extremely credible and they have the right kind of signature to demonstrate their legitimacy. Um, they're unconfirmed at this time. Of course. Now, as you can imagine, that survivor is extremely distressed to see, uh, you know, allegations and experiences that they experienced, you know, two decades ago, replicated and printed out in this way, circulating in public. This is information that 
they believe really should be in the hands of the state and not floating around in private. But what has happened over the years to some of the people who've been in these grooming gangs? I mean, I can remember reporting on cases where people were given huge amounts of legal aid. It was almost impossible to deport certain people uh, as well. And also, in some cases, one of them was uh, allowed to have a job as a delivery driver, delivering food in the same area where he'd been going around raping young girls. Uh, there was also numerous cases of people being moved out of prison, despite only you know having a few years' worth of a sentence, moving back into their local community so they could bump into their victims at the shops. Mm. In the course of our you know, groundbreaking investigation into the grooming gang scandal that we broadcast earlier this year, we did meet with many survivors who said that they were still regularly bumping into their abuser in the street, in the shops. But we've also seen, you know, also exclusively reported by GB News earlier this year, that some survivors are taking civil action in their own way after abusers are released from prison, that they can actually launch their own legal prosecution. Mm. And we saw a successful one earlier this year when Rotherham abuser Ashgar Boston uh, was, was successfully fined several hundred thousands of pounds by uh, his victim two decades on. So yep. more justice can be achieved through different avenues. Absolutely. Well, look, thank you very much for continuing to highlight this issue. It, it is a topic that bizarrely, as far as I can see, most other news outlets decide to swerve. I think it is because of the inconvenient truth about some of the demographics involved here.